What's going on you guys? Coming to you today with the Hammerhead Breakdown, the Rebel Ships from Armada's Wave 6. I'm going to be breaking down the Hammerhead Corvettes, both versions of them. I'm going to be looking at the ship stats themselves, certain builds for them, what roles they can perform, as well as uh, some sample builds. I'm also going to be breaking down the commanders that best suit this ship. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I'm going to rank them all in order. It doesn't necessarily mean that, like, last place is a bad commander. It's just that the last place doesn't really work with this ship specifically. Uh, and first place might not be that great, but it works really well with this ship specifically. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to talk all about the Hammerheads. So let's uh, let's jump right in. So first off, this is a pretty interesting ship because this is the first one that comes in a two-pack. So you're actually getting two of these with every Hammerhead pack you buy. And, and you're getting uh, kind of a small, like one of our cheapest ships in the Rebellion. A Hammerhead Scout Corvette on top is your more expensive version at 41, whereas your torpedo is only at 36. So 36 points for a, a, a shooty ship is is pretty cheap. Um, you know, the Hammerhead Scout Corvette is your more expensive version. You've got two red dice in the front compared to a red, a blue, and a black. Um, two red and a blue, and then a blue on each side. You've got uh, no weapons out of the rear. So these are very, very lightly armored ships. Uh, you know, mostly front arc ships, very, very little on the side. They're all about pointing at the enemy and flying straight at them. They don't generally last very long. With only uh, five hull and no brace, they don't last that long at all. They have very lightly shielded, two shields in the front and then one everywhere else. Uh, and they don't have, you know, a whole lot in the way of damage cancellation. At long range, they have the evade. Uh, one redirect isn't very helpful when you hardly have any shields to redirect to. But they do have the contain because they were a little bit tanky with a five hull instead of four. They only have one squad anti squadron die each. It's a blue for the hammerhead scout and a black for the torpedo corvette. Uh, and their command value of one, only one, only squadron value of one, and only two for engineering. So not a whole lot. You're kind of getting a bare bones type of ship when you pick a hammerhead. Now one of their strengths is that they have some interesting upgrades. But another strength is that their movement is kind of unique uh, in that it allows them to turn quite a bit. Um, so at speed one, they're great. They got two clicks, no problem. Speed two, they're actually pretty great also with two clicks and then one on the second one. And at speed three, they start to lose a little bit of maneuverability. So they really kind of perform best at about speed two. Gives them a good combination of, of movement and, uh, you know, and, and, and distance. Uh, and plus, if you nav, you're going to have two and two as well. And sometimes it's good to kind of do a slower approach or just kind of give yourself extra maneuverability. But, like, here's a ship you don't really even need to nav all that much with. Uh, so I kind of like that about this ship. you got a lot of, you know, having double clicks beyond the one is always nice. Uh, so, you know, now our, our we have different upgrades for between the two. So our Hammerhead Scout Corvette is got the Turbo Laser upgrade. Uh, and then I also have Weapons Team, uh, Offensive Retrofit, and Officer. Whereas our Torpedo Corvette has the same thing, but he loses the Turbo Laser and gains the Ordnance upgrade slot. So, and that's kind of self-explanatory. You're going to load your Torpedoes on your Torpedo Corvette, and you're going to load your uh, Turbo Lasers on your Scout Corvette. Your Scout Corvette wants to stay farther away from the fight. Whereas your Torpedo Corvette is more likely to get up into the fight. Let's look at some titles available for this ship. We've got three. So first I'm going to talk about Garel's Honor. This one is a unique title. This one is uh, meant to kind of remind you of Rogue One. This is a ramming title. It's a four point title. And when you overlap an enemy ship, the enemy ship suffers a face up damage card instead of a face down damage card. So this perfect. This, this tends to work really nice for torpedo corvettes that are designed to get in close range anyway, uh, and, and and also synergizes a little bit nicer with Wave Seven's profundity, allowing an MC-75 to drop a little small ship, uh, you know, anywhere it wants basically, and um, and you can drop this right in front of somebody and just ram them a couple of times or at least once usually. So that much is nice. Next, we got Task Force Antilles. Now, these are both, both of the other, you know, Organa and Antilles are both Task Force titles, which, and if you notice, they're not unique, so you can have multiples of these. Uh, when you suffer damage for Antilles uh, from an attack, you may choose and exhaust a copy of this card on another friendly ship at distance one through three. If you do that, that ship suffers one of your damage instead. While this card is exhausted, you cannot spend engineering points. 
So basically this is used to spread out damage, uh, but it makes it also a little bit harder for you to get that damage back. Spending engineering points isn't really much of a, a, a sacrifice though, because with an engineering value of only two, you probably weren't really planning on that many engineer commands. You're probably planning on maybe, um, you know, maybe concentrate fire is, is always a good one for, for hammerheads. Maybe nav, depending on what your speed is. Um, you know, and there's some cases maybe even, uh, you know, maybe even squadron. Uh, and let's look at Task Force Argana. With only one point, this is a very, very cheap title. Uh, while attacking, you may choose and exhaust a copy of this card uh, on another friendly ship at distance 1 to 3 to re-roll up to 2 attack dice. While this card is exhausted, you cannot attack ships. So this sounds a little counterintuitive, right? You cannot attack ships, but I'm re-rolling attack dice. Well, if you... Basically, you're going to want your first Task Force Argana ship to not need to re-roll. So the reason that it only costs one is because at least one of them is going to end up not being used, right? So uh, your, your first Task Force Argana ship will shoot, hopefully not have to re-roll any dice, and then not, you know, not have to spend anything. Then your second Task Force Argana ship can shoot, tap the, you know, exhaust the first Task Force Argana ships, the one that's already shot, and then re-roll the dice. So that's kind of how you know these these things work and that's this specifically with the task force organa that's kind of how you need to do that so one way i might do that is if i'm running task force organa here let's let's set up a, a, ha a hammerhead uh corvette down here and let's give one of these hammerheads uh triple laser reroute circuits and i'll give him task force organa and then let's say I have my other one you know has spinal armament and has task force organa basically i have this guy shoot first since he has trc's he's probably not going to need to re-roll any dice He's probably going to do just fine with what he rolls, considering he has turbo laser reroute circuits. So then after he goes, I send the other guy next. The other guy, can, you know, who also happens to have Task Force Organa, let's say, he exhausts this one uh, and re-rolls his dice. And that's kind of how that works. Speaking of Hammerhead Scout Corvettes, let's look at some builds. Uh, I am going to load this one up, uh, this top one up with a really heavy... Uh, heavy duty long range firing because this is one of the roles that they can excel at is in, in a long distance shooter uh, especially for the price because these guys work really great in swarms uh, this is one of those expansions that it'd be nice to get a couple of I have four hammerheads and I, I don't know if I you, I would suggest you to get more than that but um, basically their front arc is their strength right I'm going to want to point them right at the enemy so uh, spinal armament is a great thing to put on here because that gives them three in the front pretty strong that's like the same as a victory at long range that being said let's add disposable capacitors we're gonna throw his blue dye in there as well uh, you know it's not as good here this is better on a victory than it is on a hammerhead but now we're looking at you know four damage before I even have to concentrate fire so I can potentially roll five dice at long range uh, so that much is really nice not only that uh, let's throw on gunnery team because I want to be able to make the maximum use of this front arc. These are upgrades that are going to allow me to maximize my, my biggest strength on a ship that's actually very, very cheap. So it makes this ship kind of amplify those points. If you're able to pull this off and you get a three, a four die attack on one ship and a four die attack on another ship without even having to concentrate fire, well, that's great. That's that's eight dice you just rolled for a 41 point base cost ship. Of course, you're you're, you're now up to 61 at this point. Uh, and, and we can... We can aggravate this further by putting on one of my favorite uh, offensive officers, the intel officer. Now, if we do roll, you know, that that good roll where we, we get all those awesome, you know, the double hit and the and maybe two double hits and, an act, you know, well, now we activate the intel officer and uh, say, all right, well, if you want a brace, you're going to lose your brace. You know, so that's always nice. Um, and if we don't like our first roll, we can save it for the next shot. Hopefully we'll point it in a direction that we have two ships in our front arc. And that's always nice. So this is a real nice offensive kind of uh, fit that allows you to just maximize that front arc. You're really not going to be using much of the side arcs. If, you, if you're taking side arc shots with, with a hammerhead, then you might have done something wrong. Or maybe there's just not that many ships left. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I like to do. Um, let's, let's say, let's, let's, let's look at a different role as well. Maybe I am uh, going to go ahead and run... Uh, this other scout Corvette, maybe he's going to run Task Force Antilles. Maybe I've got a couple of Task Force Antilles. 
um, and I'm going to be spreading them out. Uh, you know, this would work well with Riken, for example. I'd say, like, somebody dies, and we're going to send all, you know, all our Antilleses are going to take the damage. Um, we're going to send one of the damage for every other shot over to the guy that's already died, because we were saving him with uh, with Riken. Well, uh, you know, that works out great, too. Maybe this isn't as, uh, as, as uh, uh, you know, the same build as before. Maybe we're only going to go with one shot. We're going to save a little bit of points. We will put TRC on this one. And, it, you know, if we're... Um, if we're worried about, you know, defensive, we can, you know, an, an option here maybe is Waylix Blissix. Um, we don't have to, you know, our only damage cancellation is our evade. So we're going to also want to spend that for TRC, but that's no problem because uh, he can get it back for us. And, you know, Corvettes don't live that long. So if this prolongs his life by a turn or two, that's awesome. That's awesome. So just, so, you know, just some more slightly, you know, still offensive, but par partially defensive opportunities for a ship like this as well so let's look at the uh, some builds for the hammerhead torpedo corvette um there's uh let's let's let me duplicate i want to have two corvettes over here uh, and i'm by the way i'm using ryan kingston's fleet builder for all this I'll, I'll put a link to that site in the description below it's a great fleet builder uh, i'm gonna do a a just a basic you know close range in your face uh Garel's honor build here on this guy Let's, let's get rid of these other two so we're not crowding up the place. There we go. So I want to start off with this top um, Hammerhead Corvette, Torpedo Corvette. Garel's Honor is always nice. And since, you know, and I'm going to use expendable stuff. I'm going to go with external racks. So if I do get in close and I'm going to ram you, I'm spending this. and I'm going to roll as many black dice as I can. And let's throw boarding troopers on there too to exhaust all of your stuff. So if you want to try to brace this damage, you're not going to really have much success. You know, it's going to cost you. And uh, just... Um, you know, to make sure I can do that, just to absolutely make sure, I'm going to go ahead and put, where is my buddy Hondo? Hondo is just a, a way to make sure that I can have that token. No matter what else happens, I can make sure I have that token at the beginning of the ship phase. Um, so Hondo will make sure I have the squadron token to trigger boarding troopers. This way I'm free to queue up concentrate fire if I need to, or maybe even, uh, you know, navigation if I want to make sure that I can also ram. Or if I don't want to ram, maybe I want the nav to go ahead and get away, you know, and, and, and survive to shoot again. You know, all these things are possible, uh, but that's kind of just a, a kind of a disposable, and that's 48 points for a whole lot of damage that can potentially be done right here. Uh, and this would also be really good with like Dodonna, for example, since you're giving them uh, face up instead of face down. Always nice. Uh, I'm going to do something different with the other one. I'm going to uh, show you an option you might not have considered, and that's actually using these guys as carriers. Why carriers, right? Well, they only have a squadron value of one. You're saying, Krabok, what are you thinking, man? Squadron value of one, I don't want them to be a carrier. I understand that, but they're cheap, right? And, and a cheap ship is also kind of good as a carrier. We look at GR-75s all the time because they're cheap and they only have a squadron value of two uh, and they make pretty decent carriers. Actually, they make great carriers. So why why is this you know a, a better option? Well, I'll tell you. First off, you could do either one. You could do you know the Scout, uh, the Scout Corvette or the Torpedo Corvette as the carrier. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going with the Torpedo Corvette just because I haven't done you know two Torpedo Corvette builds yet right now. Uh, but one of the things that makes them a little better than like a GR-75, for example, is the weapons team. And flight controllers is just such an important option when it comes to carriers, right? Uh, flight controllers is really, really nice. Uh, and, and, and of course, we can, we can put expanded hangar bay, increase our squadron value by one. So now we have a squadron value of two, all right? And, and, and now that's, that's not so... Now we're matching up to potentially, you know, a GR-75. We're a little more survivable potentially, um, and we, we can also shoot a little bit more. Uh, we're better at being right up close with our, you know, the other squadrons. We can, we have a black dice in case any enemy squadrons get near us. So there's some advantages here. Uh, but, but the other thing is, um, you know, we can put external racks on this guy too. If we're, you know, supporting our squadrons and we're shooting at enemy squadrons too, you can also spend external racks to, to attack squadrons. That's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize. And, and then we can mix and match officers here. Um, one of the things I was looking at is, is ways to make Leia really effective with a lot of Hammerhead Corvettes and realizing that if this guy, you know, who's got squadron value of only one, you know, were to Leia, it would have, he would basically double him. This is before I added Expanded Hangar Bay. It would, Leia would be doubling his squadron value at that point because for his price of only 36 points, I'm getting an activation. I'm getting a ship that can do some damage to ships if need be. I'm also getting a ship that can double its squadron activation. 
from Leia's ability. So that much was, you know, appeals to me. So I decided to triple it by putting expanded hangar bay on there. So now here's a guy who can activate three squadrons. And, and that's great because maybe you don't always need like really, really heavy squadron builds. Maybe you want a lot of different ships that can all do it because here, the, you know, this by itself isn't amazing. It's all right. But you can consider the fact that you could run three of these for maybe less than the price of one heavy duty carrier. Right? And now all of a sudden, if something, you know, if you get a raid token on you or you, you, you get somehow, you know, disrupted or blown up early, well, you still have two others that can that can take care of that. So you, ha you have a lot of options this way. And it's just it's just something to consider. If you have Leia as your commander, uh, you can, you know, you have more flexibility with officers. But even if not, you could consider Ramus Antilles. Now, you don't have to worry about Leia as your commander. Right. Ramus can basically make this a three. Uh, you know, and hitting flight controllers on three is pretty good, you know, and if you're trying to keep your cost down, maybe you're going with Z95s, and now they're rolling three red and a blue against other ships, That's or other squadrons, that's not so bad. But if you do have Leia, you can swap out Ramus for somebody like maybe Adar Talon, or, or Torin Far to, to support, you know, Torin Far might be good if you're going to be right up there in the middle of all of that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different options there. So now I'm going to look at commanders. I'm going to be ranking the different commanders uh, and basically just taking a look at uh, which ones complement this particular ship the best and uh, kind of just rank them in order of worst to best. It doesn't necessarily mean that these commanders are the worst. It just means that they don't necessarily complement the hammerhead the best. So starting off uh, in last place is Akbar. Akbar really doesn't do a whole lot for the Corvette. Um, you know, they don't have any red dice in their, in their side arcs. Their side arcs are generally pretty weak. Um, there are ways to make them work with Akbar, but they're not great, uh, and I just don't really suggest running Akbar with 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 the Hammerhead Corvettes. It's pretty simple, um, not really great. Next up is Aaron Kraken. Now Aaron Kraken, they can go speed three, right? And they're small, so they they fit all of his criteria. He's also not particularly expensive. He's kind of moderately priced, but the problem is I find that Aaron Kraken works. He's not a great. Commander, he works best with ships that are fast and can flank. And this is a ship that needs to point at the enemy and go straight at the enemy. And by that time, they usually want to slow down because you don't want to go super fast right at the enemy. Then they'll, you'll take all of their dice and you'll be dead before you know it. So Kraken works best for ships that can fly around the enemy while it's kind of keeping uh, at, at range. So I don't think he works very well for these guys. All right, next up after Kraken is Garm Bell Iblis, you know, with command value of one. It shouldn't be any surprise why Garm is not my favorite ship for, for these small little ships. Sometimes it is nice to get an extra token out there, but Garm just really isn't doing much for these guys. And that's, uh, that's about all I really have to say about Garm. Next up is Maydeen. So Maydeen can help these guys, but he's just not really doing a whole lot because they have such maneuverability built into them already. Um, he's going to be best when they're flying really fast around at speed 3. But like I already talked about with Kraken, they don't really want to necessarily be at speed 3 all that much. So they they're, may do speed 3 early in the game just to get into position, but generally a lot of times they're going to slow down and kind of form a firing line. And think of them kind of like the bombers in The Last Jedi, how they were kind of moving really slow, but they were all lined up. That's kind of how these ships work best. So uh, I just don't see that really being a big thing. Next up is... Next up is Radis. Now, this is a unique situation because Radis is never going to complement any ship that he's on because he, only, he exclusively deals with some other ship. So the reason I have Radis on here is, you know, in the middle is because um, usually when you're using Radis, you're going to have another ship off the board and usually it's going to be a large ship. But I think Radis is decent for these guys because you have to put Radis on a ship uh, that's going to be in play. And so putting him on a cheap ship allows you more points to funnel into the big, big ship that you keep off the board. And so because of that unique kind of synergy between a cheap throwaway ship and, and a big, you know, a big, um, big power ship that's not on board yet, I think, you know, Radis, you know, can certainly be used on these guys. Because once, you know, once you warp that other ship in, you don't even need Radis anymore. So it's not like he has to be on a tanky, tanky ship. Next up is Riken. So General Riken is really good for this because they have a title that kind of synergizes directly with him. And also, if you want your sh little ships to ram, it's a great idea to potentially park your little Garel's Honor right in front of a Star Destroyer and use Riken to save him. Then keep it there so you can attack last and ram before you die. 
Riken's really good on any kind of, you know, with, with ships that are, you know, easily disposable, especially ships that have black dice that want to get up close and want to survive and make sure that they can shoot. Although, keep in mind that Riken has been changed to only be once per round, so if you started playing with Riken when he first came out and you aren't aware, just make sure of that. And you can also check crowdbox.com uh, if you want to check out the latest errata and FAQs for all of your favorite games. Next up is General Dadana. General Dadana is going to be uh, all around good. He's always going to be close to the top of any list uh, for commanders because he's the cheapest in the game at only 20 points. I love him. He is also uh, universally good because every list has the capability to deal critical damage. Even if your opponent flies on an asteroid, they're going to take face-up damage. So he's universally good. But in this case, um, you know, he'll work you know pretty well with the torpedo corvettes if they get those black dice in there at close range. He's going to, you know, also work a little bit with your torpedo corvettes, especially if they're running like TRC. You can always choose a crit as well, but. But generally, he's just there from being, you know, universally well liked and also very, very cheap. He's ultimately good in just about every list you do. Next up is Sado. Sado is really nice with these guys because Sado, or specifically with, you know, with the Scout Corvette, because Sado really wants two red dice at least in in your arc. So this way you can turn those two to black dice at long range. Really, really nice. Uh, they work great on these on these on these ships just because you can have a whole bunch of them and it's two black dice, two black dice, two. If you have four of them in a row, you know, and you send your A wings out there or whatever, Sato's just going to turn that into a complete barrage of black dice, and it can really overwhelm somebody, especially because they have the weapons team. And they can take you know the gunnery teams and 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 shoot twice, and they can oh, they can just do a lot with Sato. So Sato is really really cool with these guys. But my number one is going to have to be Leia, who comes with them. Uh, Leia just serves so many different purposes with, with them that she trumped Sato. Even though I really, really like Sato, I think Leia is more universal. And even though she is also extremely expensive, uh, she is just un universally good for these without having us any real weaknesses. Like Sato doesn't really do a whole lot for the Hammerhead Torpedo Corvette, whereas he's a little bit, I mean, he still helps it. But he's a little bit better, you know, with 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 the scout version. Leia's gonna work in every like just for just about for every build. Since this is a, a ship that isn't really gonna be stockpiling tokens very much, she's gonna say no, no, you're gonna get the token for whatever you do all the time. And it also frees up that officer slot, which is becoming more and more contested because more and more good officers are coming out. So you don't have to have Ramus on your ships if you don't want to. Uh, I just think Leia's gonna come in at the best spot on the list. So. That is uh, that is my hammerhead breakdown, guys. Let me know what you think in the co uh, comments below. We do have another round of the giveaway going on right now, so you can win an expansion of your choice in the form of a $20 Cool Stuff gift card, and hopefully there'll be a lot more Armada news coming out uh, shortly after Legion launches, so we're looking for a really, really happy late March, early April. I'm hoping our big, big news is coming really soon, so stay tuned for that because I will be reporting on it as soon as I can get something to you guys. All right, that's going to that's gonna wrap it up for this Hammerhead Breakdown. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.